What's up all you Pop-Tarts, and welcome to the second ever episode of Astral Lore. Today we're going to be looking at the planets of the solar system this whole game takes place in, and we'll be sizing them all up and figuring out if they actually are planets. Note, I realize this is a science fiction game and things don't have to be realistic. This videos are fun and shouldn't be taken seriously, unless of course I'm actually right about all this math, which is very unlikely. The planets in this game are not the biggest. You can run around them in a pretty short amount of time and the moons are even smaller. Also, the star in this game is the same size as the planets. Talk about weird. I've dug around a very long time to find no actual official size of these planets, so I'm making it my job to actually get a true size for them using pixel measurements and math. You're probably asking yourself, Shive, how in the living hell are you going to get the actual size of all these planets without having something as a reference? And it was this very question that stumped me for about three hours when I conceptualized this episode. Then it hit me. The Moonlander. The Moonlander was put into Astroneer on the 50th anniversary of the first manned moon landing in history in 1969. Players can go to the moon of the game, Desilo, and find the Lunar Lander somewhere on its surface. Do you see where I'm going with this? Because I hope so, because quick maths are coming your way. The Moonlander's official height is 22 feet and 11 inches according to multiple sources. So using this information, I promptly stood next to this thing, took a screenshot, and did the following math to get the official height of an Astroneer. I started with counting the amount of pixels in the height of the Lunar Lander, which was 588. Then, I counted the amount of pixels in the height of the character, which was 147. Finally, using the confirmed real-life height of the Lunar Lander and some proportions, I got the canon but not canon official but not official height of the Astroneer, which was... 69 inches tall. <laughs> nice. But an actual height that is 5 foot 9. Bam. Wow. Amazing. Now... Using the Astroneer as a ruler probably isn't the best idea. What we should do is use the perfect cubic measurements this game has ever so nicely given to us, which is the boxes. These boxes made my life so much easier, guys, you don't even know. Okay, so, I got the height of the big boy box using the same method of getting the height of the Astroneer. I used the known height of the Astroneer, which was 69 inches tall, <laughs> nice. That measurement in pixels, which was 147, and the pixel height of the box, which was 273, to get 128 inches, which is 10 feet and 8 inches. We now have a ruler, guys! This is so useful to me, because it's a cube. Each side is the same value in terms of size. This will make my life much easier when trying to measure something in a 3D plane. Using our new ruler, we can now measure the size of the planets using speed, time, and distance. And from now on, to make things much easier in the long run, I will be using meters instead of feet and inches. So 10 feet and 8 inches in meters is about 3.25 meters. Knowing this, we can do a lot. So this is going to sound like a bit of a stretch, I know. What I did to get the most accurate results is I made a paved road across the whole planet in an effort to get a smooth circle to measure. Trust me, it sounds really wrong, I know, but honestly, it's our best bet to get a proper measurement for this planet, so we're going to do it this way. I was not going to take the time to place a million boxes across this circle then have to count them, so I made this easier myself, albeit including more math work. So what I did was made a long -ish stretch of like 17 boxes, and I then timed how long it took for a fly speed of 10 to cross that distance. That stretch was 55.25 meters long, and it took the fly speed of 10, an average of 1.06 seconds, to cross. I then recorded the time it took to go across half of Aatrox at a fly speed of 10, which was 42.155 seconds, which I promptly doubled to get 84.31 seconds. Using these values, we can do more proportion work. Cross multiplying and solving for x in this situation gives us 4,394.46 meters as our planet circumference. I'm assuming these planets are all the same size due to multiple timing trials giving around the same results over all the planets. Knowing the circumference, we can figure out everything about this sphere. Using the equation c equals 2 pi r, we can get the radius of the planets, which is 699.4 meters. Now that we have the radius, we can figure out the surface area pretty easily, using the equation a equals 4 pi r squared. The surface area we get from plugging all these numbers in is 6,150 kilometers squared, which is a very small planet. 
Can we even call these things planets anymore? Yes, we can. According to the definition of a planet made by the International Astronomical Union, the established definition is 1. The object is in orbit around its star, which it which these planets are. 2. It has a sufficient mass to assume hydrostatic equilibrium, which means it has a nearly round shape, which these planets do have. And 3. It has cleared the neighborhood around its orbit, which means it has nothing to collide into as it orbits around its parent star, which these planets, once again, do have. So yes, they are planets. We know everything about these planets now. The radius is 699.4 meters. The diameter is 1,398.8 meters. Their circumference is 4,393.46 meters, or 4.39 kilometers. And the surface area is 6,147 kilometers squared. To put this all into perspective, the Earth, you know, our planet, has a surface area of 510.1 million kilometers squared. These planets surface area is 0.0012% that of Earth's. To show you really how small these planets are, we'll compare them to a much smaller object from our solar system instead, Pluto. Pluto, famous for being so small, has a surface area of 16.7 million kilometers squared and a radius of 1,188.3 kilometers. These planets are really freaking small, guys. People go on jogs longer than these planet circumferences. If you ran at 8 kilometers an hour consistently, which is like normal jog speed, you would go around these planets around half an hour. In reality, I do not think a planet this small could even hold a spherical shape, let alone have an atmosphere, but knowing that this game is very much so science fiction i'm gonna let it slide but we're not done yet don't forget about the moons now i'm definitely gonna measure these too i hope you guys are ready because this is the last round <laughs> oh man i just wanted an excuse to put that in the video i love that effect Okay, so it's literally the same formula. I placed around 12 boxes instead of the previous 17, but that doesn't matter. These 12 boxes equated to around 39 meters. The average time it took to go past these 12 boxes at a flight speed of 10 was 0.73 seconds. The average time it took to grow around the entire moon was an average of 41.8 seconds. Using a bunch of proportions again, I got the circumference of Desilo and Novus, which was 2,233.15 meters. Using all the same formulas from before, I got the official size of each moon in this game. Radius is 355.42 meters. The diameter is 710.84 meters. The circumference being 2,233.15 meters, like I said before. And the surface area is a 1,587 kilometers squared. The moons in this game have half the diameter, radius, and circumference, but a quarter of the surface area of the planets they orbit around. It kind of makes sense, actually. Just looking at these things, you can definitely see that my number is worked out. You could jog around these moons in 15 minutes. That is crazy. Like, that is, like, really small. That is, like, a morning jog, and you go around this entire moon. Like, that's, that's pretty small. Sorry about that. Where was I? But that's just a theory. Again. No, no. All right, all right, let's try this one more time. So there you have it. The official but not official canon but not canon size of the planets and moons in the wonderful game of Astroneer. I know this really wasn't a lore video, but I wanted to do this anyway because it was really interesting and fun to do. I hope all my math was right, and I hope I can maybe get some confirmation by any trusted source from System Error for this. Big to ask, I know, but a shibe can dream. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Astrolore. I stream on Twitch if you didn't know already, so make sure to swing by there and say hello. Also, join my Discord where you can discuss Ashnir lore with others, and just to be part of a fun community. See you guys later, and have a wonderful rest of your day.